Right, so the only thing better than buying a watch is the process of trying to buy a watch. Trying them on, getting online, window shopping endlessly. And today, guys, I need your help. I'm going to go try some watches on. I've got about four or five lined up that could be possibly my next watch. So I'm looking for your comments on what you think the best watch is and a bit of advice on where I should go next. Right, guys, let's go. So, should I go long jeans? Long jeans? Hamilton? No. What about another Braemont? I like Braemont, but I don't think it's that interesting, are they? So, I know, I know what we should go. Go on. Why didn't you go for that, um, I can't remember what size it was, that, really, that smaller Amiga one with the little diamonds on it. Do you remember what it's called? Yes, the ladies aqua terror bit, I don't think so. <laughs> so if you're wondering why my wife's on that side of the camera and, and I'm here, well, you only have to take one look at her guys and realise why I'm the star of the show. Isn't that right, babe? Behind every man, there's a good woman. You wouldn't be where you are today if it wasn't for me. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> so we're going to the White Rose now and it is about 20, 30 minutes from where we live. They've got a Beaver Brooks, a Goldsmiths and an Ernest Jones. Now the Ernest Jones is the best. They've got Amiga, they've got Tudor, they've got Braemont, they've got Long Jeans, Rimveal, uh, they've got a big Tissot and Rado stand. Uh, so they've got loads going on. They've got quite a good U section as well. So I'm going to be going in there and trying on a load of watches. The Seamaster, Tudor, Steel and Gold Chrono, the Pelagos, possibly the Tudor Pepsi, possibly the BB58 and the Breitling. Aviator rate is in the used section. Now, it's relatively cheap. They're all good watches, but I'm really struggling what to decide. Does that mean I, I don't actually need a new watch? You need a new handbag, babe. Shall I buy you one of them? Yeah, I need a new handbag. Absolutely. Two. <laughs> Absolutely not. Hi. Hi. Stuck in traffic. Supposed to be watch shopping. I'm not impressed. Right, babe, what watch shall I buy? Um, I don't know. This is the kind of advice I get all the time, isn't it, babe? <laughs> Which watch do right. you want to buy? Tudor Pelagos in blue. Mm, it looks nice. It looks nice. I don't know. It nice. It's a tool watch. It's supposed to look rugged and manly. No, it doesn't. It's nice. I like the watch and I like it on the rubber strap. Is it better than the Amiga Seabaster? I don't know. I think it's a different watch. Yeah, it's a different watch. I mean, it's a different style of watch. Well, why is it different? They're both dive watches. I think the Tudor looks better with jeans and a t-shirt, and I think the Speedmaster's a little bit more dressy. Do you reckon that's right? Yeah. Probably is actually right, yeah. So, a dressy dive watch or a tooly dive watch? Did you ask me? Did you just ask me if I'm right? Well, you're not right, are you? <laughs> I'm always right. <laughs> <laughs> Even when I'm wrong, I'm what right. What about that Breitling I showed you? The uh, no, no, I'm done with Breitling. Why? Bad experiences. We've had two bad experiences, haven't we? Shocking yeah. behaviour. Uh, the Tudor Black Bay 58, the smaller blue dive watch that I've had before. Is that the one we were just talking about? Do you see what happens, guys? <laughs> this is why we never talk about watches. You just said the Tudor. No, the Tudor Pelagos is the big titanium dive watch, and then you've is got. Is it the blue? Yeah, it's blue. And it's a bit smaller. It's a bit more vintage inspired. Blue and white? The markers are white, yeah. Right, okay, yeah. We're on the same page. That's the one I was talking about. No, that's the Pelagos. I'm on about the Tudor Black Bay 58. Oh, which one's the Tudor Black Bay 58? Right, forget that one. Should I buy the Tudor Steel and Gold Chrono? I like that watch. It's going to be difficult to sell afterwards, though. So. Oh, well, we, know, we all know how much you like to sell a watch. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. <laughs> um, I do like that watch. I think it's nice. But I feel a bit like it might be a substitute. What about the brand new Amiga Speedmaster? 
Oh. I love you, babe. Talking to yourself again. Yeah. <laughs> Speedmaster, what do you reckon? I don't really know. I don't really no, I don't really, I'm not really feeling Speedmaster. What? It's very iconic. Very it, was, popular it, was, it was iconic last time you had it as well, but you still sold it. Sold it twice, but it's an update, it's got a better movement, it's got a better bracelet, the lugs don't stick out, all the things I complained about on the previous model, so they've upgraded it. You could almost say it's for me personally. Amiga reached out, Andrew, what do you want to tweak? <laughs> I'm sure after the honeymoon period was over, no, that, all... that there'd be something else that you didn't like. They're all boring after the honeymoon period, aren't they? Right, so when I got in there, Liam was waiting for me, very helpful man, and first off the bat, I tried on some Tudors, the Black Bay Original Black, the Pepsi and the Pelagos. Now, all classics, I've had all of them before, apart from the Black, I've had that Burgundy, but I really, really liked the Pepsi, I thought it looked a business, I really loved the combo, I think it's a really, really nice looking watch. I was a bit disappointed with the Black Bay, to be honest, it just felt a little bit bland in comparison to what else was on the table. Fantastic looking and that top heavy size. I don't think it'd be as much of an issue as it was previously for me. The Pelagos, as always, blows me away with its quality, its looks, its style. The bracelet's just a fantastic drape. It is relatively thick uh, and that's the only concern, the thickness. Would it play my mind after a period of time? But I mean, guys, look at them. They're absolutely stunning. And either one of them that I picked, I, I couldn't go wrong. But if I had to pick, looking at them right now, it's got to be the Pelagos, closely, closely followed by the Pepsi. But having said that, it's got to be the Pelagos, I think, for me. It just, they're not much thickness between them, but with the, the titanium and the micro adjustment, it's just a really gorgeous watch, to be honest. So yeah, that is the favourite out of them three so far. <laughs> Next, I went on to this absolute all-time classic. I mean, straight off the bat, I can see it's not a tapered bracelet. So that is a concern for me. The blue stunning, the wave dial, the bezel, the build quality, everything is there, guys. It's absolutely stunning. If you bought this watch or the black version, you can't go wrong. It's a really good thickness as well. It's not too thick. So I think it could be an all-day, everyday wear. So that is a real firm favourite. Now, the Speedmaster, I've got to warn you guys that there's a budget of 5,000 and under really and that was the Hezlite version Speedmaster. It's incredibly small compared to the Seamaster. They've made such drastic changes to it. I've got to admit for a tool watch it does kind of feel a little delicate, a little bit like jewellery but it's a really good fit. The bracelet drape is fantastic. It is a stunning watch but I want the Sapphire. I'm too scared to buy the Hezolite, to be honest. It's just too risky for me. That's Liam giving him away. Very helpful man. But the Speedmaster, as great as it was, the Hezolite is out the window. And as you can see, look how small it is. Look how small it is compared to the Seamaster. So the Seamaster and the Pelagos in blue, those two are my front runners so far. I think they're fantastic in different ways. And they are. They're too different, to be honest. So that's uh, something to consider. Now, they have a great range in Ernest Jones. I really enjoyed my time there. And then next off for that was the Tudor Royal. Royal? Royal? Unbelievable quality. Very, very similar to the date, just at a fraction of the price. Now, the thing that struck me about that is that it glistened just as nicely in the lights as my date, just. But the bracelet drape was out of this world. It really was unbelievable. So, is it a watch that I'd buy? I think it probably looks a little bit too big there at 41, but I definitely have it. Possibly in the 38 might be a bit small, but you, you only get the day, day feature on the 41. The drape on the bracelet was unbelievable. The only downside, it doesn't have Tudor's amazing in-house movement, but that was a real contender for further down the line. It's not in my watch considerations now. Oh la la, but this sexy beast is absolute chunk of steel and gold looks fantastic it'd have great wrist presence and the black well is it more versatile than the blue possibly but the blue is almost more iconic so i'm really con not concerned 
confused with which way I would go. Would I go blue or would I go black? The Tudor steel and gold chrono is something a little bit special, but the downside is for me, the pushers, you have to screw them and unscrew them to use them. And for ease of access and ease of use, it's not as easy as a, a chronograph where you don't have to do that or a diving bezel with ease of use. So the Speedmaster in either the blue or the black at this stage is my favorite, possibly followed by the Pelagos. And then the steel chrono, steel and gold chrono. I mean, it's a lot thinner than the normal black bays. It has got that solid gold bezel. It's got the solid gold buttons. But yeah, just does look big, doesn't it? It's only a 41, but it felt bigger than the other. It almost felt bigger than the Seamaster at 42. And that Seamaster profile is a really, really good size. It's thin. It's attractive. You could wear it all day, every day. It's a proper, quite glamorous tool watch. And oh my lord, this was just a bit of fun. I just wanted to try it on. It was about £8,500. Wow, 39 mils of very sexy gold there. And unfortunately, I tried the Tudor Black Bay 58 in blue one last. It was on the leather strap, which made it feel really insignificant, really dainty, really small. And at the end, Liam ruined it by telling me that a woman had come in and bought it for herself last week. So that's how small it is that ladies are coming in and picking it up as a woman's watch. Now, I've owned that watch before and it is a gorgeous beast, but... That size does concern me. But yeah, they're my choices, guys. Let me know what you think. Hey, guys. So I'm back home, back in my back hole. <laughs> Wristwatch check. I had my day just on all day. Still looks a business. It's still all got a lot of wow factor. Bruised and battered, but it is. It's probably my number one watch it has been for well over a year now. But what do you make of my choices? I'm... <sighs> I'm struggling to find the actual watch that I really want to wear now. Is that because I'm bored of watches? I don't need a watch? Is it because they're just such great watches that I don't want to miss out on one of the others? I don't know. That's kind of why I've made this video. I want your guys' opinion on... I want a watch that... I want micro adjustment. I want great accuracy. I want comfort. Uh, I want to be able to wear it all day, every day. And to almost forget you've got it on, really. So... That is the Pelagos, or that is the Seamaster for me. I think the Steel and Gold Chrono could be a little too chunky, or it's probably the best looking though. I think the BB58 would have the comfort, would have the accuracy, would have the, the great looks, but it's just, is it a little bit small compared to the other watches? I don't know. Maybe I should have tried it on first, because in essence, it's the same size as my Rolex Datejust, so it could have been that if I'd have tried it on first, it wouldn't have been such a drastic size comparison to the other guys that I've tried on. So yeah, it's between the Seamaster either colour, steel and gold chrono, the BB58 on steel bracelet. And I don't I never even tried on the Brightling Aviator 8 in the end. And that's a great looking watch, but that's in the U section and I feel in the mood for a brand new watch. There's nothing better than that really. So let me know what you guys think. I need some help off you guys, because as you can see from the beginning of the video, the wife is useless at advice. <laughs> so uh, get involved. Help me out, guys. Tell me what you think. Have you got anything else from left field? Something else that I haven't thought of? They are a bit predictable, my choices. I do tend to go to Rolex, Amiga, Tudor. Uh, maybe branch out to Brightling if I'm feeling risky. But apart from that, I've never really looked at Zenith, never looked at Panerai, never looked at IWC. Looked them from a distance, but I've never really considered them enough to add them to the collection. Is that small-minded? <laughs> Probably with me, yeah. <laughs> right, guys. I'm Andrew. I'm a watch addict. And I'll see you in the next one.